Charles had no children during his lifetime, and wasn't married. Ulrica Eleonora the Younger immediately declared herself monarch by stating that she had inherited the throne in 1718. In 1719 the Riksdag ended the absolute monarchy established in 1680 by Charles XI and reinstated parliamentary rule. Ulrica Eleonora wished for her husband, Frederick I of Hesse Castle, who she married in 1715, to become her co-monarch. However, this was not permitted by the Riksdag. But, the Riksdag was willing to replace her with Frederick as sole monarch if she abdicated, an idea that had the support of Frederick. In 1720, Ulrica Eleonora abdicated in favor of her husband on the condition that she should succeed him if he should die before her. Her life was childless, and as queen consort, she withdrew to private life. Frederick succeeded her in March 1720. The peace with Denmark-Norway was concluded in Frederiksborg in June 1720. Russia, who had been assaulting the Swedish east coast since 1719, including an assault on Stockholm, signed a peace treaty with Sweden in 1721. King Frederick I of Sweden formally recognized the transfer of Estonia, Livonia, Ingria, and southeast Finland to Russia in exchange for war reparations, while Russia returned the bulk of Finland to Swedish rule. In 1723, Frederick tried to strengthen royal authority, but after he failed, he never had much to do with politics. He devoted most of his time to hunting and love affairs. One of his few important policies was the banning of duels. The Russo-Swedish War was waged between 1741 and 1743. It was instigated by the Hats, a Swedish political party, that aspired to regain the territories lost to Russia during the Great Northern War. The war was a disaster for Sweden, which lost more territory to Russia. Ulrika Eleonora died in 1741 in smallpox. A few times during 1748, King Frederick suffered strokes, and he died from gangrene in 1751. As Frederick I had no legitimate heirs, it had to be elected from somewhere else. In 1743, Adolf Frederick was elected heir to the throne of Sweden by the Hat Faction. The Hat Faction wanted to obtain better conditions at the treaty from the war with Russia, from Empress Elizabeth of Russia. He succeeded as King Adolf Frederick eight years later in 1751. During his 20-year reign, Adolf Frederick was little more than a figurehead, the real power being with the Riksdag of the estates, often distracted by party strife. Twice, he tried to reinstate absolute monarchy in Sweden, but nearly lost his throne in consequence. Adolf Frederick was married to Louisa Ulrika of Prussia, and they had four children. Among them Gustav and Charles. The king was regarded as dependent on others, a weak ruler, and lacking of any talents. However, he was allegedly a good husband, a caring father, and a gentle master to his servants. Adolf Frederick died suddenly in Stockholm in the beginning of 1771, with symptoms resembling either heart failure or poisoning. The reputation that he died from a large meal are considered propagandist by modern writers. His hospitality and friendliness were witnessed by many who deeply mourned him at his death. Gustav III was the heir to the throne, and at the time of his accession in 1771, the Swedish Riksdag held more power than the monarchy. In 1772 he seized power from the government in a coup d'état, called the Swedish Revolution. Gustav was a vocal opponent of what he saw as the abuse of political privileges seized by the nobility since the death of King Charles XII. He initiated a campaign to restore a measure of absolute monarchy. In 1777, Gustav was the first formally neutral head of state in the world to recognize the United States during its war for independence from Great Britain. In 1788 he declared war on Russia, after he was refused Russian support to acquire Norway from Denmark. Denmark declared war on Sweden in support of its Russian ally, but was soon persuaded to sign a ceasefire through British and Prussian diplomacy. 
The campaign to restore absolute monarchy was completed by 1789. It swept away most of the powers exercised by the Riksdag, but at the same time it opened up the government for all citizens, thereby breaking the privileges of the nobility. Gustav legalized Catholic and Jewish presence in Sweden, and enacted wide-ranging reforms aimed at economic liberalism, social reform and the restriction, in many cases, of torture and capital punishment. Throughout 1789 and 1790, he conducted the war with Russia. At first, the venture seemed headed for disaster, before the Swedes successfully broke a blockade by the Russian fleet at the Battle of Svenskesund on 9 July 1790. This is regarded as the greatest naval victory ever achieved by the Swedish Navy. The Russians lost one-third of their fleet and 7,000 men. A month later, a peace treaty was signed between Russia and Sweden. Gustav's war against Russia and his establishment of absolute monarchy in 1789, helped increase the hatred against the king which had been growing among the nobility ever since the coup d'etat of 1772. In 1792 he was mortally wounded by a gunshot in the lower back during a masquerade ball as part of a coup attempt, but managed to assume command and quell the uprising before succumbing to sepsis 13 days later, a period during which he received apologies from many of his political enemies. Gustav III had a son with Sophia Magdalena of Denmark, Gustav Adolf, born in 1778. Upon Gustav III's assassination in 1792, Gustav Adolf succeeded to the throne at the age of 14. The assassination of his father was a trauma that left deep scars with Gustav. Since he was only 14 years old, his uncle, Charles, ruled in his stead as a guardian regent and guardian government. The king came of age and thus regent in 1796. In 1797 Gustav married Friedrika Dorothea Wilhelmina of Baden and two years later, their first son, and Sweden's new crown, Prince Gustav were born. Gustav's politics and stubbornness at the time of Napoleon's march through Europe led to a decline in confidence in him as regent, and his personal aversion to the French Revolution and Napoleon, and his unrealistic view of Sweden's military force led Sweden to declare war on France in 1805. In 1808, the Russian army crossed the border to Finland without an official declaration of war. In this war, Sweden was supported by Great Britain, while Russia was supported by the French Republic. The war broke out as a result of Tsar Alexander I of Russia, and Emperor Napoleon I, concluded a peace in July 1807. The settlement obliged Alexander I to attack Sweden if the country did not break its ties with Britain and joined Napoleon's trade bloc against the UK. In 1809, a peace treaty was signed with Russia. The war had major consequences for both Sweden and Finland, as Sweden lost the eastern part of Finland to Russia. Finland thus became part of the Russian Empire. On 7 March 1809, Georg Adlerspare, triggered the coup of 1809 by raising the flag of rebellion in Karlstad and starting to march upon Stockholm. To prevent the king from joining loyal troops in Scania, other conspirators broke into the royal apartments in the palace, seized the king, and imprisoned him and his family. The king's uncle, Charles, was thereupon persuaded to accept the leadership of a provisional government. Gustav, to save the crown for his son, voluntarily abdicated, but the Riksdag of the estates, dominated by the army, declared that not merely Gustav but his whole family had forfeited the throne, perhaps an excuse to exclude his family from succession. Gustav's uncle was proclaimed King Charles XIII, and at the end of 1809, Gustav and his family were transported to Germany. In 1810, the peace with France was signed and Sweden had to join Napoleon's continental system, which was a large-scale embargo against British trade. In 1812, Gustav divorced his wife. He suffered a stroke and died in exile 15 years later in 1837 in Switzerland, lonely, alcoholic and penniless. By the time Charles XIII became king, he was 60 years old and prematurely decrepit. 
In the end of 1809, he was affected by a heart attack, and was not able to participate in government. The new constitution which was introduced, also made his involvement in politics difficult. A planned attempt to enlarge the royal power was not put into effect because of his indecisiveness and health condition. His incapacity triggered a search for a suitable heir. Charles adopted the Danish prince, Christian August, but he died from a stroke in 1810. The prince's death caused big commotion, and rumors started to spread about that the prince had been poisoned. The rumor got the marshal of the realm, Axel von Fersen, murdered during the prince's funeral train, accused of having poisoned the prince. A new crown prince had to be found, and a baron was sent to France in Napoleon's opinion in the matter. Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte was then chosen as his successor, after the baron had sold the Swedish crown on his own behalf to the dislike of the government and the king. However, the king soon changed his mind and adopted Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte in 1810, and named him Charles John. Charles's condition deteriorated every year, especially after 1812, and he eventually became but a mute witness during the government councils chaired by the crown prince, having lost his memory and no longer being able to communicate. After eight years as king only by title, Charles died without a natural heir in the beginning of 1818, and Bernadotte succeeded him as King Charles XIV John. Let's cover a bit of Charles XIV John's history briefly. He is considered to be the king that laid the foundation to the Sweden we know today. Before his father died he was apprenticed to a local attorney. But after his father's death he joined the army as a private in 1780, 17 years old. He quickly climbed the ranks, reaching sergeant in 1785, and adjutant major in 1790. Following the outbreak of the French Revolution, his eminent military qualities got him promoted to brigadier in 1794. He had his first interview with Napoleon in 1796, and was appointed the commander of the 4th Division. He married Desiree Clary in August 1798. A few months that year he was Minister of War, in which capacity he displayed great ability. In April 1800, Bernadotte was offered, and freely accepted the post of Commander-in-Chief, of the Army of the West. After a battle with the Prussian Reserve Army in 1806, which Bernadotte crushed, he desperately tried to prevent his men from sacking the city of Lübeck, was given six horses from the Council of Lübeck as a token of their appreciation. He also treated with courtesy 1,600 Swedish prisoners and allowed them to return to their home country. The impressed Swedes went home with a tale of Bernadotte's fairness in maintaining order within the city. Bernadotte was known throughout the army for his probity and honesty during his campaigns. He habitually used his own money to pay for food for his troops, and to give money awards to those who merited recognition. He held his troops to high standard and punished looting and raping severely and was known to intervene with his sword drawn against those engaged in pillaging. In 1807, after the French victory over Russia, Bernadotte got the mission to lead an invasion force on Sweden. In March 1808 he moved his army towards Denmark, who was allied to France. There, he awaited the attack order. Sweden's king, Gustav IV Adolf, who hated Napoleon, would now finally be forced in line. But no attack order was issued, and Bernadotte returned south. In 1810 he was unexpectedly elected the heir presumptive to King Charles XIII of Sweden. Remember the baron that went to Paris, and sold the Swedish crown on his own behalf to the dislike of the government and the king? That baron was the nephew to the commander of the Swedish force that was captured by Bernadotte back in 1806 in Lübeck, which he allowed to return home. Before freeing Bernadotte from his allegiance to France, Napoleon asked him to agree never to take up arms against France. Bernadotte refused to make any such agreement, upon the ground that his obligations to Sweden would not allow it. Napoleon signed the Act of Emancipation unconditionally. In the end of 1810 Bernadotte made his entry into Stockholm, he was adopted by King Charles XIII under the name of Charles John, 
and converted from Roman Catholicism to the Lutheranism of the Swedish court, required by Swedish law. Amongst the first of Charles John's acts as crown prince was to address the dire state of the Swedish economy, which was in shambles after expensive wars with Russia and France, and several poor harvests in prior years. Charles John immediately began making reforms, and used his sizable fortune, to pay off much of the national debt. The keynote of his foreign and domestic policy was maintaining Swedish independence of action. In 1813, Sweden joined a coalition with Russia and Britain against France, one year after Napoleon's fatal mistake to try and capture Moscow. Of Napoleon's 670,000 men strong army, only 90,000 returned from the campaign against Russia, a devastating defeat. One of the reasons for electing Charles John as a regent, was that people hoped that he could recapture Finland, which was lost to Russia. But Charles's plan was to instead grab Norway, and in 1814 Norway was transferred to Swedish control after a swift defeat of the Danes. The military operations in 1814 were to be Sweden's last war to this day. Charles John was popular, and when Charles XIII died in 1818, the throne succession was without any drama. He had practically ruled the country since he arrived eight years ago. The long peace led to an increased prosperity for the country. The national debt was paid off, education was promoted, agriculture, commerce, and manufactures prospered, and the means of internal communication were increased. The main street in Oslo, Slotsgaten, would later be named after Charles John as Karl Johans Gate. Charles died in early 1844 after he suffered a stroke, 81 years old. He was succeeded by his only son, Oscar I.